Now we are going to see the division of kingdom fungi. So we start with zygomycetes. As we had discussed, the other name oftenly used in place of zygomycetes is phycomycetes. So you are going to learn it in both the context. You don't have to get into the depth why they are named so. As you can see over here, this is a rotting bread that is having a bread mold over it. If we magnify that greenish part, that greenish fungi that is present over the bread which rots after 2-3 days, it is the bread mold that we see and the example is of rhizopus. Over here you see the mycelium, the rhizoids are root like structures which are going to be embedded in the substratum that is going to take up the nutrition. They are going to get developed and they are going to form the myceliums. You see the sporangia for the stalk which would bear the sporangium, there would be a stolen which would be connecting the sporangiophores and the sporangium is going to have spores present inside it. So let us see what zygomycetes is all about. See the name zygomycetes is because there are zygosporangia which are present in sexual reproduction. Let us see the class characteristics and we are going to see few examples as well. The zygomycetes exhibit great diversity of life histories because uh, some of them show alternation of generation at one stage while others show differently. There are so many species which are present in zygomycetes. Earlier even the slime molds were included in this classification. So they are quite diverse uh, phylum in themselves. They include fast growing molds. Yes, I give you the example of rhizopus. So they include the fast growing molds. They are going to be parasitic as in the case of uh, certain para plant parasites that we have and commensal symbionts. They are going to give benefit to the plants or whatever uh, uh, main uh, autotrophic entity they are going to feed on. Then we have the zygomycetes are named for their sexually produced zygosporangia. Didn't we talk about zygospore in the previous lesson? So that zygospore is born upon zygosporangium. That zygosporangium is the mycelium basically. That is why the name comes zygomycetes. Now zygosporangia which are resistant to freezing and drying can survive unfavorable conditions. This you have to remember. Talk about their examples. We have example of mucor which is present abundant in the soil and is responsible for rotting of certain uh, chemicals inside the living material. Then we have rhizopus, the bread mold that rots your bread, that does not let your bread survive even for 4 days. And then we have albugo. This albugo is a plant parasite on mustard. You might have seen those uh, mustard plants getting uh, you know, a rotten sort that is due to albugo candida which is a zygomycetic fungi. Then we have uh, the simplest descriptions and examples. We have rhizopus as shown over here. Then we have mucor that is also represented and then we have pylobolus that is also an example. Here the vesicles are being formed as I told you in the beginning that you don't have to get into the vesicular formation. What you have to remember is that sporangia is being formed and spores are present inside them. Those spores are going to be formed as a result of asexual reproduction or they are going to be formed as a result of sexual reproduction. Production. In case they are zygospores, so they would be result of uh, sexual reproduction. Then what we move to next. What is this? As you can see, the simplest uh, idea that you can get over here that these are something cup shaped. Okay, Something that is cup shaped, these are fungi and uh, ascomycetes is the name of this uh, category of fungi. Asco name refers to sac. Why this is termed as ascomycetes? Because asco, if we have to understand the meaning, it means a sac or cup shaped fruiting bodies is the characteristic feature of this division. Now, a cup shaped fruiting body, what basically is a fruiting body? Fruiting body is something which has the spores inside it. As I told you in the beginning, this Escomycetes and the other class that is Basidiomycetes, the classification is made on the type of fruiting body inside which the meiotic spores are developing. So those asexual, uh, sexual spores, pardon me, uh, if I am getting I am getting confused in asexual and sexual, you do not have to get confused with that. Asexual spores are kept aside, we are talking about sexual reproduction and in terms of sexual reproduction, the sexual spores that would be formed inside the fruiting body, that fruiting body would be the characteristic feature on basis of which the classification would be made. 
come to the fruiting body what you see over here this is the simplest description that I can give you this is cup shaped as we saw in the previous picture this these are the fungal mycelium and you can see if you can make it out there are fruiting bodies inside it which are known as ascus okay in the ascus we have ascospores and this entire is the fruiting body this is known as escocarp. Now you have to remember the terms and I am mentioning them over here. See, escomycetes has escocarp. Now you know the word carp is for fruit. We always use the word carp for fruit. So we have this, this cup shape that is uh, somewhat like a cup for toasting, wine or uh, drinks you can say. This escocarp is the fruiting body inside which we have ascus. Now ascus are what? They are sac like structures as you can see over here in which you are going to find 8 ascospores. Okay? So these ascus are present inside the ascocarps. Ascocarps are having ascus, ascus are having ascospores. And what are ascospores? They are meiotic spores, haploid spores which are going to germinate and give rise to new fungal mycelia. Now let's see the characteristics. Escomycetes, they live in marine, freshwater and terrestrial habitat. So, we see that they are ubiquitous in their availability. The phylum is divided by production of sexual spores in sac like esci, usually contained in fruiting bodies called escocarps. As I told you, what are escocarps? Escomycetes are commonly called sac fungi because of these. And escomycetes, they vary in size and complexity from unicellular yeast to elaborate cup fungi and morels. So, when we uh, come to morels and cup fungi, we have been introduced or we have been told that the most important yeast which is highly uh, important for economic purposes and industry that is also part of escomycetes and when we talk about yeast the least thing I remember is we used to draw the budding method of asexual reproduction in yeast. So, you can recall that this escomycetes has the simplest form of reproduction as well as the most complex one where they have uh, escospores which are being formed. So, remember it from yeast. Yeast is uh, Saccharomyces crevici. I have not mentioned over here. You have to remember that yeast is the example of Escomycetes. It is a unicellular fungi. It could be put into the Fire Kingdom Protista, but over here we take it in fungi only. Escomycetes, the example is Aspergillus. Now, Aspergillus is also very important uh, fungi from uh, economic point of view because it is responsible for uh, production of aspartic acid. Then we have Neurospora. Neurospora is a fungi that belongs to Escomycetes yet again and it is termed as Drosophila of plant kingdom. That means if I have to study some genetic implication of a plant, I would better go for Neurospora. It is easier as in the case of if we have to study animal characteristics and the genetic content of uh, animal world is to be considered, we take Drosophila as an example and the plant kingdom though it is not plant kingdom from our uh, knowledge of five kingdom classification in all these plant like organisms that are not animal like we have neurospora so it is the drosophila of plant kingdom and then we have claviceps claviceps is uh, responsible for causing ergot of rye which is used for production of certain uh, drugs which are useful for uh, betterment of diseases and moving further this is the sexual reproduction representation of escomycetes. As you can see over here, let us start with the first stage that is the mycelium that we have over here. This is the plus mating type and this is the negative mating type plus minus. Means the one would give rise to one type of gamete and another would give rise to another type and they are going to come close to each other. As you see over here, one is having ascogonium and other is having anthridium. Whatever gametes or cells are present inside the anthridium, they would go to ascogonium. Inside the ascogonium, there would be formation later on. Once there is transfer, that means heterokaryotic condition is being formed, there would be formation of fruiting body. Inside the fruiting body, you are going to see the ascogonium 
not not the asco it would be they would be, you would see ascus the sacs as you can see this is a single cell it divided it divided into two then it gave rise to four cells that means this part is representing meiotic division where a single cell gave rise to four cells after these four cells are formed each cell undergoes mitosis and eight ascospores are formed when eight ascospores are formed inside each ascus what happens is that the ascospores are released when the ascospores are released they are going to give rise to new mycelium which would further act as positive and negative later on for next mating cycle so this is about the sexual reproduction now what is next is basidiomycetes now these are the only fungi i was introduced to a first ever time in my life these are mushrooms basically you would find these wild mushrooms you would find them on your dining table as well when you are consuming mushrooms on some pizza or something so th these are edible fungi that we have there are many edible fungi but simplest example is those of uh, these mushrooms now they belong to class basidiomycetes as i told you here also we have the classification on the basis of fruiting body here the fruiting body would be basidiocarp as we had escocarp where uh, over here it would be basidiocarp carp word that means it is for fruit we have basidiocarp like we had ascus over here we are going to have basidium where the spores would be formed in the ascus there were eight in the basidium there are four spores which are formed and the spores would be called basidiospores these are your learning things that you have to remember see let's see the uh, class characteristics they are also known as club fungi they have almost 25000 species that have been discovered the sexual reproduction is uh, by the means of basidiospores which are formed on club shaped basidia which are present in the basidiocarps some produce asexual spores known as conidia and uh, talking about their uh, mean their fungal body we have discussed which one was septate and which was uh, aseptate the hypha would be septate because as you can see such a big fungi it cannot be a septate cenocytic condition but divided by incomplete cross walls the cell may or may not contain one or two nuclei and the fruiting body is basidiocarp all that we have uh, read and talked about this is repetition of that now we will see the actual mushroom where is the basidium located what is uh, inside the basidium we have talked about it but let's see see this is the fungi that you have if you put that uh, cap of the fungi which is known as pilus what you see underneath are the gills inside each gill or you can say at the periphery of each gill each gill is comprised of basidium okay this is the basidiocarp it is going to have basidium and these basidium will have basidiospores these are somewhat like those bowling pins that you uh, have in your bowling games most of the students nowadays are quite fond of bowling so this is what is a basidio basidium basically and over here we have basidiospores this would be arranged in such a manner as you can see this would be the basidiocarp there are so many basidium which are located and inside each basidium there are basidiospores four basidiospores that would be present this is what we had to see now let us see the life cycle starting from the hyphae see both no this won't be the right one we are going to start from here this is the fungal mycelium that we have both of them this uh, not from here again again we'll see uh, this is to be seen from this point no Th this is to be seen from this point these are the two fungal hyphae one is positive one is negative plus and minus see this is basically a unit which is formed after sexual reproduction okay now this is positive this is negative fungal hyphae it is uh, one would act as male and one would act as female to put it in simple terms they are going to get close then there would be plasmogamy that takes place after that there would be uh, that condition dikaryon condition then what happens is this dikaryotic condition it gives rise to the fungal fruiting body where we have that mushroom 
club fungi as we have we have gills and inside the gills there are basidia which are formed these basidia give rise to basidiospores these basidiospores they are going to germinate and give rise to mycelium yet again if you cannot associate with this diagram i am going to show you again that this is what a fungi looks like on its gills you are going to find the basidiospores now come to this this is what how it started fungal hypha in the beginning most of them one acting as positive one acting as minus then they come close they form the dikaryon stage where two of the cells they are in close contact plasmogamy has taken place but karyogamy does not take place then we have the condition these uh, plasmogamous condition that develops into a full uh, good looking fungi the uh, good looking mushroom that we come across that is in the dikaryonic stage dikaryon is formed that dikaryon then gives rise to basidia when this dikaryon forms basidia there is fusion that is karyogamy then meiosis takes place and basidiospores are formed which later germinate to give rise to the mycelium so this was about basidiomycetes now let us see the examples of basidiomycetes see these basidiomycetes are responsible for smuts and rusts in plant and they are very 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 notorious for most of the farmers you may ask them they would be so tired of the rusts and smuts which come and destroy their crop as you can see over here the rusts which develop there is wood rust there are smuts see how badly the corn has been destroyed you can see these uh, cucumbers have been destroyed the rusts are there the reddish part all these are the notorious uh, fungi which are harmful for the plants and mostly they are harmful for the crops and you will not like any farmer who basically likes a fungi we are going to see the examples agaricus is the name for the simplest mushroom that we consume astilago is that genus which is responsible for these smuts these red blackish spots which just take up the entire grain they are responsible for smuts and bunts that is astilago and talking about pacinia pacinia is responsible for the rusts that develop there are rusts which destroy the entire uh, um, field of paddy and rest now last one is imperfect fungi why it is imperfect fungi first thing i want to tell you before we come to imperfect fungi whatever imperfect fungi we have studied till now it is in close contact with ascomycetes now we had discussed that uh, this is a uh, taxonomic misfit basically they are considered as ascomycetes whose asexual reproduction has not asexual yet again sexual reproduction has not been discovered by now only asexual methods are seen and as by any moment if you see that if they are producing basidio carps then you would classify them into basidiomycetes and if they are producing by ascocarps then it would be ascomycetes so most of them are in close relation with ascomycetes the first thing that i had to make clear to you that is why we see the example of aspergillus and penicillium mentioned over here let's see what we have first thing is that they have septate hypha of course they'll have that they are terrestrial species they would not be aquatic they asexually reproduce by conidia sexual reproduction is not discovered that is why they are imperfect fungi they are fungi that uh, where no sexual reproductive phase has been discovered this i have been talking about have characteristics similar to ascomycetes again they are saying what only i have said and classified on basis of asexual reproduction they have given the example of aspergillus and penicillium which were earlier the part of deuteromycetes but now they